right? He's manifesting what other people wanted for himself, and he's feeling resentful for the people that care the most about him. He said his family, his friends, and I, I'm not going to ask for hands, but I know exactly how that feels. I'm debating, thinking about going back to law school, but at the same time, I don't really want to play with the loan situation, and a part of me still wants to do something as far as uh, creating content, um, creating something that's actually good within the media because I feel like a lot of it is garbage and really bad for the brain. So I guess my question is asking, where, where, where did you get okay with shifting gears so many times? Because yeah. for me it's like, I'm really working on just ignoring everything. Like I don't care what my, how my mom feel about my life decisions, Good. my dad, my block, Good. my college friends, I just don't care anymore because I'm literally in college debt because this choice was made to make my family proud. Right, see here, that's, that's what most people have in their life, right? He's manifesting what other people wanted for himself and he's feeling resentful for the people that care the most about him. He said his family, his friends, and I, I'm not gonna ask for hands, but I know exactly how that feels. $100,000 in debt, graduating law school, going, what the heck am I doing? I don't wanna be a lawyer. Um, how, how, how I, I literally started finding my own frequency and here's the handful of sand analogy. All those people that love you, and they do, man, they care a lot about you, and you gotta draw from that inspiration. It's like a handful of sand. When my mom, I'm 51 years old, my mom still gives me advice, and I still have to go back to center. But I literally take a handful of sand and I listen. You know, oh, you shouldn't travel so much. You know, you need to play golf more, or whatever advice, and I'm like, eh, handful of sand. And then every once in a while, someone tells me something be more interested than interesting, be kind to your future self, do good deeds, be kind, not right, be of service, provide value, put profitability first. Uh, when you make a decision, we live on this earth, so do an economic analysis of it. So I don't think going, I think law school is a, a tremendous thing. I'm not sure I'd go that far into debt. I, I was so scared of my debt, and you, you may resonate with this, I graduated $100,000 in debt, and I remember when I was applying to those jobs saying to God, God, if you can give me a job to pay back my law loans and buy my mom a house, I will shovel shit with my hands for six days a week, 12 hours a day, and be grateful. That's all I wanted. If you could let me pay back my law, all that education, everything that it was so desperate because I wanted to please my mom and, and everyone, you know, the, the, the fetus wasn't fully developed till after graduate school. I have Ivy League, Harvard, Penn, Columbia. I'm living up to all things I shouldn't be living up to. And I'm sitting there in bed thinking to myself, I've done all of this so I can shovel, pray to God for the ability to shovel shit for six days a week, 12 hours a day, so I can pay back my loans. I'm not making that decision. I'm not making that decision. And so what I'm doing now is saying to myself, how can I get a law degree if that's what I want? If I want a law degree, not because other people tell me, but because I learned how to communicate, I think there's future opportunity to make money and there's relationships that I'm gonna make with people because I'm gonna get in a good law school because I'm not gonna half-ass it. I'm not just gonna go to you know, Western State University that's discredited in three years, right? I'm going to a top law school specifically for this. This is the way that I would do it. And here's my economics. I'm gonna find the freaking money if that's what I wanna do. And if not, I'm gonna find something else that is more economically sound. Because profit first, I always will put purpose into what I'm doing. I find purpose in taking out the trash. I hated taking out the trash. I found purpose in it by saying to myself, this will give me time to think about what I want. I move so fast, I gotta slow down. So when I see trash, I grab it, and instead of creating resistance and spilling on me and cutting me, right? I actually change the energy by putting purpose into something basic. So I would say to you, you got a lot of choices. One is going to law school. First, make the decision why you want to go to law school. Then put an economic plan together of how you're going to pay for it. I met, great story to this measure, uh, Josh York. Guy's like a 256 franchises, fastest growing franchisee, gym guys, and it's international now. But I love the way that he decided to start his idea. He needed 15 grand. So he already knew what he needed. He created a plan of he's gonna start this online gym and it was gonna cost him 15 grand. Unlike most people, right, he decides, okay, I'm gonna go work for the 15 grand and I'm gonna literally save 90 some percent of everything I make 
because it's only going to take me so long to get my 15 grand. So instead of like building a business, right, like all this, he just went right for, okay, I'm going to make 15 grand and save it and sacrifice and eat peanut butter and jelly, which is what I did even when I started working. I had a $25 a day per diem. I literally would keep the 25 and eat peanut butter and jelly or eat on the plane so I could have an extra 175 a week, 700 a month to pay my Lalo. <clears throat> but this guy, his friend says, hey, I got a job at the country club. It's good money. You can caddy. He goes, I don't know anything about golf. He goes, you don't got to know anything about golf. Just caddy. So what does he do that's different than everyone else? And this is the attitude I want you to take. He goes and does research on all the members of the high hoity-toity New York country club and he finds the richest dude. He finds the richest guy. He asks around about the richest guy. Not only is he the richest guy, everyone says he's the best tipper, the nicest guy. And so what he does, and this is what changed my mind in the story, is he said every time he came to the club, he was right up on him. And he knew what he liked to eat. He knew he liked Diet Coke. Oh, you know, we like a Diet Coke. And guess what happened? The guy eventually said, I want that guy to caddy for me. So then when he caddied for me, he knew all about him, and he was like a perfect caddy, catering to his ego, doing all the things. And of course, big tip. Saved all of it. Guess who he chose the next day when he played? Same guy. I thought he was going to tell me that he sucked up to the guy and asked for the 15 grand. That's where my mind went. That's not why he's so successful. He's so successful, he's more interested than interesting, and he was willing just to earn it and save it. Gary talks about all the time, I, the part I like, that I love, is about the sacrifice part. You know, I'm in sports, man, people tell all the time, how'd you get that job? <coughs> Mike Dannenbaum, or my friend that invented Pictionary. You sold Pictionary, how'd you do that? And he looked at me, he goes, Dave, no one was there when I was 16 hours at the bottom of the escalator at Nordstrom handing out Pictionaries. It's 17 years, man. I risked everything. Mike Tannenbaum, GM of the Jets, was in law school with me. He always says, well, I got lucky because the bargaining agreement, I'm, Mike, I graduated with 100 grand in law loans. I have Jewish parents. You graduated with 100 grand in law loans. You have Jewish parents. You work for 600 bucks a month for two years for the Saints. That's sacrifice. I wasn't willing to do that. I was too afraid. I was still living in shortages, voids, obstacles, scarcity. Don't project that onto everyone else. Don't feel their pressure. Here, here's another rule for you younger people. I wish I would have learned this. In the end, through the bankruptcy, through all the huge awards, successes, and millions of dollars and everything I had, I realized one thing about the person that I most want to please, my mother. Should be myself. But in the end, it's the same thing. Because what I learned about my mom and about every one of your moms, which probably have the most influence on your life, is they only want one thing for you. They just don't know how to do it. They just want you to be happy. They want you to be healthy and happy. And they just don't know how to do it. So what do they do? They tell you, oh, I see a whole bunch of rich lawyers. You're a boy from the hood playing back. You're smart. You graduated Penn. Go to law school. But they don't know dick about what it's like to have $250,000 worth of loans. And they don't know they're sentencing you to pressure in an unnecessary situation, that the world economy has changed, that we don't have to go to school anymore. Right? We can be educated in different ways, although there are advantages. I always tell people, you want to go to school and you want to be an entrepreneur, is that what you want to be? Then go to the school with the biggest, richest alumni. Go do your research. Get into that college. Don't worry about your goddamn grades. Go to every single alumni event, network your ass off, and get a kick-ass job from some billionaire dude that, you know, my law school, we had the CEO of my favorite story. The guy said, my mom, I wasn't studying hard. She was like, you're going to end up working for Burger King someday. So he started studying hard. He ended up being the CEO of Burger King. I go to the school, right? <laughs> but that's really bad. I know how the world works. If you really want to be educated, go online. I wish I had access to Dave Meltzer and Gary Vee and Bob Proctor. And go on. I go online all the time. I want to research something. I'm like, what is this mere brain thing? And I'm looking online for the conscious mirror because the, the brain actually can mirror emotions, which may actually cause empathy, and I'm really curious on how we're connected. Well, I didn't have to go to med school. There's like all these killer videos from these unbelievable doctors that can't, they can't even afford them at Harvard. <laughs> how, think outside the box, man. If you're going to be like everybody else, then do what everybody else does. Doesn't mean don't go to law school, but there's 16 million ways to go there.